Former President Trump is now facing an unprecedented three indictments, this time for obstruction of justice related to the January 6th Capitol riot. This coming just one day after Hunter Biden and associate Devin Archer told the House Oversight Committee that then-Vice President Joe Biden participated in at least 20 phone calls with foreign business partners. Trump wrote this on Truth Social yesterday. Why didn't they bring this ridiculous case two and a half years ago? They wanted it right in the middle of my campaign. That's why. Joining me right now is former Arkansas governor and former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. Uh, Governor, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Trump has a point. What do you make of all of these uh, indictments? This is an attempt to steer the presidential election of 2024. And it always just happens to come out when there's damaging information about the Biden crime family. Here's what really Republicans are grappling with. There's two schools of thought. One, Trump ought to get out because he's just got too much baggage. But the other school of thought, the one to which I subscribe is, Trump not only can't get out, we need to get behind him as never before, because if we don't, this becomes the new template to how to defeat a presidential candidate that you're scared of. You just use the government uh, throttles and you go after it. You weaponize and politicize the Department of Justice and you use all of the power of government that one sitting president can take on his opponent, not through the election process, but through the wheels of justice that you control. This is an outrage to our system and in most, I think, uh, egregious to this is that what they're really saying is Donald Trump uh, said some things they don't like. So if free speech now is going to be criminalized and prosecuted, we're screwed. Well, that's right. And that is what Jonathan Turley, Fox News contributor, said on, on Fox News last night, saying that there's less than meets the eye in this indictment. I thought the last indictment was a very serious threat for Trump. When I take a red pen through this material that is protected by the First Amendment, it reduces much of this to a haiku. Uh, a similar sentiment talk about, talked about this being free speech. So what's the charge? What, what's the crime? Him saying that he thought that the election was stolen. That's the crime. Well, and that's what he believes. Right. Here's the point. Jack Smith trots out there yesterday, and he talks about January the 6th. But this indictment has nothing to do with January the 6th. This indictment is all about what Donald Trump said, what he believed, which is protected under the First Amendment. Thank God for people like Jonathan Turley, who is a Democrat. He's not a Trump supporter, but he is a constitutionalist. He has respect for the law, something Jack Smith doesn't seem to have, nor does Merrick Garland, nor does Joe Biden, and nor does the press in this country which is really disturbing to me, that they don't realize that if the Justice Department under this administration can destroy the First Amendment for Republicans, they can also destroy it for the members of the media. So they better watch out and look behind them because they are coming up after them. Well, Governor, but while you're saying all that, you also say that the GOP should not be rushing into a Biden impeachment. Look, they've got 170 yes. suspicious activity reports. They've been able to identify up to $30 million in money. James Comer says it's $30 million from different uh, players, $17 million just in a two-year period uh, back in 2014 and 15. And you've got whistleblower testimony. How much more evidence do you want that this family has been accepting money from foreign our nationals. Why wait on impeachment? I think the reason you wait is because you need to dribble this out until the point comes where even Democrats can no longer defend what is obviously in front of them, and even members of the press start doing their jobs. The problem with an uh, impeachment that happens right now is that the immediate reaction is just saying, oh, it's just political payback. Well, what has to happen is what happened in the 70s, which I lived through. And in Watergate, as the evidence continued to dribble out, there came a point at which Republicans in the House and the Senate turned on Nixon and said, we can't defend this anymore. The press was already there, of course. But when that happened, it was over. Mm. That's what needs to happen. I think McCarthy's taking the right approach. Start the inquiry of impeachment, but don't file the articles. Because right now, if that were to happen, and even if the House were to vote for impeachment, it dies in the Senate, not just because of Democrats, but because of people like Mitt Romney mm. and others who will vote against it. 
So uh, make this so it becomes impossible to ignore by the people that right now are ignoring it. But I don't, I don't understand how any trial could take place before an election, which is a year away. I mean, you've got the first GOP debate in one month, uh, less than a month at this point. You've got the Iowa caucuses in two months. I mean, Trump is teasing uh, on Truth Social that the first GOP primary debate might determine his 2024 vice presidential pick. Uh, you've been on that primary stage before. What do you think about that? When I asked Trump, are there people on that stage who you think could be a partner? He said, absolutely. And he started complimenting Tim Scott. He complimented uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. So what do you think about uh, the presidential candidates and whether or not one of those people on that stage is going to be uh, his running mate? Very well could be, and I think the two you mentioned are certainly in the running for that. I can tell you who won't be on that list. It ain't going to be Chris Christie. Uh, it, you know, it's not going to be some of those who have been critical and have said that he ought to get out of the race or uh, that he should be charged criminally. That's nonsense. Hmm. Uh, what ought to be happening is every one of those candidates ought to be defending Donald Trump, not because of he said something that they didn't like, but they ought to be defending that he has a right to say what he wants, yeah. and they ought to be crying out against this ridiculous persecution. This isn't prosecution. This is persecution. This is election interference. And we better call it for what it is or we lose this great republic. It's absolutely extraordinary. Kelly O'Grady is with us this morning. Go ahead, Kelly. Governor, I want to tap into your experience as a candidate. You know, it feels like voters are getting so much fatigue, right, from these indictments, from the Hunter Biden proceedings, and it's really going to come down to those independent voters that you've been laser focused on before. None of what we're hearing right now is focusing on those kitchen table economics. How do you think all of this theater is going to impact those folks when they go to the polls? Kelly, I think most people right now are going to pay attention only to the horse race aspect of this. Unfortunately, policy will play a back seat, which is unfortunate because that's really what ought to be separating candidates right now. What will they do? Right. How will they fix some of the problems exactly. that Joe Biden has helped create? But unfortunately, uh, and, and let me be very honest. I blame the media. I think that, quite frankly, these debates are not debates, they're game shows. I would scrap the whole concept. I wouldn't have moderators. And I know I'm saying something that probably goes against even the very network I'm talking on. But here's what I do. Get rid of moderators. Put the candidates out there. Everybody gets exactly the same amount of time. Mm. They, make their, they make their point. They ask each other questions. The debate becomes a real debate. Yeah. This is not a debate. This is a forum, and it's controlled by moderators, not by the candidates. Do you think Trump is going to participate in this upcoming debate? Probably not, and I don't blame him, because if he does, all he's going to do is wear a target on his back. Let mm. these other guys fight it out in a demolition derby, because mm. they're all vying for one thing, taking him on, not taking Biden on. Right. Governor, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. All right. Have a good day. Mike Huckabee joining us.